bitchy. Uh, but uh, like not just people in general, that would be awful to me. Off camera personality that might possibly work for a police department that shall remain nameless. I think you're going too far there. Busted any hoes lately? Multiple. Multiple hoes. What's that like? What is it like busting hoes? <laughs> is it is it fun? It's usually messy. Ooh. Are are they like messy, he says. Is it is it like an episode of Cops or is it <laughs> Sweet summer dew, he says. Okay. All right. Well, with that, hello again and welcome to the Comics Online Podcast, Season 15, Episode 25. I'm your host, Kevin Goswan, and with me today, as usual, is our co-host, Troy David Phillips, store manager here at Flashback Comics and Games in Woodbridge, Virginia. Woodbridge, Virginia. How about that? Troy? Yeah. You, uh, did you have a good week? Uh, I did. It's I, been a it's been a week. It's been like whoa. It has been. It has yeah, been. Yeah, there's been a awesome lot week. going on. Uh, a lot going on in comics. A lot going on in real life. A lot going on on TV. Yeah. 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 Had a wedding to go to last week. Have a wedding to go to this week. It's uh, and so this is a cosplay wedding. You're going to go as Nick Fury. Weird. I am, in fact, going to. Uh, <clears throat> I have to. Uh, I have to thank my uh, my prop manager, uh, <laughs> my my unnamed prop manager for my. Agents of Shield badge. This guy. Yeah. yeah. Only only cost me five hundred dollars. Right. Well, you know, I had to, I had to you know mark it up because it's been a while since uh, New York Comic Con twenty thirteen. This is this is how Kevin affords his seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Uh, is that how much it cost me? Okay. Well then, <laughs> I'm gonna need a new house. I don't think I can afford that. But hey, all right. But too late. You're already there. Oh. I'm yeah. going to need to ex- expel those neighbors because they suck. <laughs> the neighbors are awful. They play this awful music. Like, back home, if you get, like, you know, mariachi music, you're like, you can just, like, settle in, right? But the neighbors on one side of me have got this, I don't, they, they're Spanish speakers, but I don't know what country they're from. And I'm like, what is, what is your terrible music? It's awful. Hmm. You, you know what would help that, Kevin? Huh? Conan the Barbarian, number 24. The Song of Red Sonia, art by Barry Windsor Smith. I should sing them the Song of Red, S- Red Sonia. No, you should buy it for yourself and just read it whenever they're playing that loud music. Just At like go four to your in happy the morning. place. Go to your happy That's place. That's weird. They're really late. Anyway, yeah. so we've got uh, we've got our top five new comics this yes, week. Yes, we do. And of course, these are new comics for for tomorrow, which is uh, going to be Wednesday, March eighteenth, twenty fifteen. Yeah. So in the meantime, Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Oh yeah. Hey, Happy St. Patrick's Day. You got check your, out my green. You got your Green Lantern. I've got my Green Lantern belt buckle on and a little bit of green in my tie, and that's as far as I go because I'm, you know, not not. Pro- oh, and my my socks are the uh, the the loot crate. I am Groot. Yeah, 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 he is Groot. And funny thing, whenever he says it, I hear him saying different things every single time. That's great. It's great. You know, they re- they really didn't play that up as well as I as I would like in the in the film. I'm I'm hoping the second one you get some more of that uh, translation. Of people like, why do you know what he just said? Well, uh, kind of like Han Solo and Chewbacca. The funny thing is, yeah. when they launched the uh, Annihilation Conquest Star Lord limited series, which had Rocket Raccoon and Groot and Star Lord and several other characters, yeah. Groot actually spoke in sentences that everybody else could understand. Really? The I Am Groot came later into the Guardians of the Galaxy series. I'm. I, so, what was the? Did they explain that ever? Or? Uh, they just kind of transitioned to it. Without giving too much backplay onto it. Weird. I, yeah. I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't read that that series when he was speaking normal. Now I I, I remember uh, you know the uh, well reading reprints of those original uh, Groot from Planet Planet X or whatever. Yeah. And of course you know the the Groot character or Groot creature uh, is uh, is speaking in in full. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean you know, like Hulk, you know, sh- short sentences, but sure. but more words. Tales to Astonish number 13, 1960. There you go. <clears throat> Predating the Fantastic 4 by 1 year. Huh. Yeah. How yeah. about that? Tales I I'm, I'm color me astonished. Uh, <laughs> okay, what color is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Groot color. <laughs> Let me I'm get sure. to work on that. I'm going to call up Patty Cockrum and ask her what uh, what colors I she should. Colorist? Use. Oh, she was one of the best. Oh. It's a shame she's retired. She was one of the best. Alongside uh what was it Christy Sheely? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, that, I, I remember it in an old-timey uh, female colorist. Yeah, uh, yeah I got, how about I, that? How got about a little that? bit of lore in me, not like the Encyclopedia Troy Tanaga, but a little bit. Well, are you ready to hit the top five? I'm definitely comics ready. Make Let's start with better. yours. Let's start with mine. All right. You, All right. Are we are we in order here? Yes, we are. All yes, right. Are. You going to do an intro or no? Uh, well, first, uh, I wanted to spotlight a classic character who has been in this weekly ongoing series, uh, DC Comics, New 52, Batman Eternal. Now, hold that up. Batman Eternal is being handled by just really... A tour de force of talent. Uh, it's Scott Snyder, James the IV, uh, Tim Seeley. It's just amazing. They have all this high talent. Uh, Ray Fox is on it, too. I, I, I didn't mean to, to skip over his name. Um, they have been blending together several subplots into this weekly series. I like uh, this art. Uh, it's it's beautiful. The whole book is fantastic. We're at issue 50 now. Not much more to go. Uh, and then we launch into DC's Convergence. But Eternal, Batman, and Arkham Manor tie together. So the events of Batman Eternal, where we see Arkham Asylum sink into a sinkhole, lead us into Arkham Manor. Uh, the I was going to ask, this, this, right. this is one of the... Uh... Uh, is, is this one of the uh, the the uh, what do you call uh, film? No, this is uh, to the best of my knowledge. This is not the movie homage variant. Oh, are there? Although I didn't realize those are variants. I thought there was. Yeah, it was just a yeah. month of. That's a. It's a thing DC is doing. Where well, I mean, they're they're considered variants. They're not ratio variants. But, right. But uh, in any event, uh, Batman Eternal has taken us through uh, subplots involving uh, Hush and Jim Gordon and corruption in Gotham and the Joker and Arkham Asylum, uh, the Gotham Underground, Killer Croc, Ra's al Ghul. Bane, there's a lot going on. Batman is just, you know, his his back is up against the wall here. And that if you're also following the Batman regular series, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, that's just fantastic. The 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 end game storyline is the best yet. And that says something, because all of the Snyder Capullo Batmans have been amazing. I'm going to have to go back and get all of these, aren't yes, I? You are. oh. yes, I, you I've are. Yes, you I've got a handful here and there. I got the first trade. We went and interviewed uh, Scott Snyder back when that first trade first came out. Uh-huh. Or, the, you know, the hardcover one. Court of the Owls. Court of the Owls. It was like 12 issues-ish, kind of thick. And uh, and we were interviewing him, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go pick it up and have him sign it. And so I did. You know, it's cheesy to say, but I did I did that. And, you know, he's such a, such a uh, warm guy. Guy I hadn't read, but the first maybe two at the most, I think just one, and uh, and I was so thrilled with that Court of Owls. I mean, it's yeah. the reason to read, and this is coming from me. This it's bat the bat books, particularly Batman, the reason to read New Fifty Two books at all. Yeah, yeah, bar none, the Batman series, Snyder and Capullo has been DC's most consistently best series. I've liked other things from the New 52. I know you're not as wild about it, but I am. Uh, at Batman Eternal, Snyder and, again, you know, James Tinian, Ray Fox, uh, Kyle Higgins, Tim Seeley. It's amazing what they have put together and the way they have blended all of these stories. The weekly format allows for these subplots to unfold much, much more quickly than a regular monthly book. So the pace really drives quickly here. Uh, Batman Eternal, up to issue 50, I've got a lot of the back issues. I'm not quite complete, but I'm pretty close to complete, and there will be trade collections of this thing, so you want to start pick. If you haven't gotten into it, you definitely want to do this. This is really good Batman. And this started, basically, it, it has been truly weekly, so it, this yes. started about a, a year ago. Yeah. Nice. Uh-huh. All right. So okay. your second one. My second one. Now, this is uh, one of the Altered States one-shots that Dynamite is kicking out. This is Doc Savage. Uh, last week was uh, Vampirella, uh, which I've not had time to crack into yet, but I was giving this a thumb through because I love the character Doc Savage. I've loved the pulp action novels. I've loved the other titles that Doc Savage has been in from Dynamite. I was a fan of the work that was done at Marvel, uh, at DC. 
see at the reimaginings of Doc Savage in the first wave. This actually takes Doc Savage, and uh, it's funny because the title is Altered States. I don't know if you remember that film from the 1970s, but uh, this actually does take Doc Savage, uh, through the use of a, a pharmaceutical drug, back into a primal state. Uh, it's as if Doc is living out the life of a primitive ancestor, like, you know, Neanderthalic man. Um, the artwork is beautiful. David Avalone, Dave Acosta, it's, you know, and, and that, uh, that Philip Tan cover, that cover is just, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. beautiful stuff. Um, and Doc Savage is such a great character with such a rich history. So I strenuously recommend Altered States Doc Savage one shot. You can just pick this up and read it. It's a self contained story, one and done. It is I not do necessary. Love that idea. Yeah, it's not necessary that you read the uh, Vampirella, but I would recommend the Vampirella as well. So, uh, I, you know, Dynamite has a lot of really good stuff right now on their title polls. I like the idea of a self-contained story, and that's a great jumping on point for anybody, just to see if, if you know, oh, are these dynamite Doc Savages, are they any good? Yes, well, they are. Well, here you go. Here's your, here's your taste, and for the cost of, of one comic, you can go in and, and see how that story's going to work. Yeah. 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 That series is going to work. Um, they're ongoing. The ongoing Doc Savage is on what number now, approximately? Uh, seven, yeah. maybe? Uh, somewhere in that ballpark. So you could probably still get some from this man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, and there's a trade them, collection. There is a trade collection. So there you go. Yeah. So your third pick. Oh, this is a great pick. Combined work from Boom Studios and IDW. This is Star Trek Planet of the Apes. And it is a wonderful crossover. Uh, we see that the Enterprise has crossed into a parallel universe. And in that parallel universe, we meet uh, Colonel George Taylor on the Planet of the Apes. Uh, there are Klingons there. The Klingons are selling weapons to the gorillas, uh, pushing for a guerrilla insurgency, destabilizing the, the, the go order of the government. Um, <clears throat> Taylor gets on the Enterprise in the previous issue, and uh, he and Captain Kirk actually have a fist fight. And it's just like classic vintage Star Trek. It's so good. I'm liking this art from uh, Stott. Here, this is the, the the Tipton's doing the doing the writing, but uh, I, Rachel Stott is it? Anyway, great uh, great uh, capture. Of, uh, of the look of original track. Yeah, uh, you've got uh, good faces on the characters, uh, good faces with the apes, with uh, George Taylor, you know, looking like a younger Charlton Heston. It's been so much fun. I'm a Star Trek fan. I'm a Planet of the Apes fan. Uh, I'm also actually enjoying the other Boom Studios Planet of the Apes book, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe next time when there's a new issue of that. But for this week's top five, Star Trek Planet of the Apes, the Primate Directive, that is up there. Okay, now, Marvel. Believe it or not, I'm not all independent. I'm not all DC. I loves me some Marvel. And I love the work of Nathan Edmondson and Phil Noto on The Black Widow. The artwork is beautiful. I want to see them win a Harvey Award for something. The work in this book deserves merit. They deserve an award for this stuff. Um, Nathan Edmondson has been giving us a Black Widow that is very independent of the Avengers. Her story stands alone by itself. Yes, she is an Avenger, and that's important, but it's not mission critical to understand what's going on in this book. It takes her back into her spy roots, gives her a very interesting cast of supporting characters. Uh, there is action, there is characterization, there was a very cute cat. Uh, <laughs> this particular issue is is a bit of a throwback into her past. Uh, yeah, you know, well, you, you need to do that because her background is so very rich with actual published story with retrocon story uh you know there's and all the stuff that's come out uh with uh, the agent carter limited series about uh the training program of the uh, female characters uh so we're yeah. getting into some of that with the black widow again nathan edmondson phil noto black widow this is uh you know we'll come to that <laughs> Definitely. Uh, 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 We're gonna have to talk about this later because I had no idea. I mean, I knew he was gonna be. All right, we'll talk later. We'll yeah. talk part two. Part two. We're gonna talk about he's, this. He's he's like got ADHD or something. I don't I don't know. I'm I'm on my meds today. I swear. <laughs> but I get excited. 
Those were Tic Tacs, Kevin. Damn it. <laughs> Tic Tacs again. <laughs> All right. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. My Your top pick for any month. Yes, yes. Because it's just so darn good. Jonathan Luna, Sarah Vaughn, Alex and Ada. Okay. Now, after all the other stuff, you know, everybody knows I read Godzilla. Everybody knows I read The Avengers, Captain America, Thor, Green Lantern, Justice League. And I come back to Alex and Ada every month because it's really just that damn good. Um, the characterization, the dynamic between Ada the android companion robot, and Alex, uh, the the man who quote-unquote owns her, uh, their developing relationship, uh, Alex coming to terms with his attractiveness to this artificial individual, her artificial intelligence, her artificially generated personality, but it is a personality. She is developing has been developing, you know, those those traits of uniqueness, that individuality. And the book gets into what makes up a life form. What is, in fact, a personality? What is an individual? Um, do these androids have rights? Are they dangerous? Um, I always enjoyed stories like that in, in Next Gen. Yeah, you know what? This is as good as any of those stories, like Data, Measure of a Man. Remember that yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is as good as any of those. Jonathan Luna has... Do we have trades of these? Uh, I can get them for you. I, probably, I can get them for you. Why don't you just give me the first trade uh, of this? You know, you know what else I might still have? What? If you're fortunate, I might actually have some autographed Jonathan Luna single issues. What? Jonathan Luna came into the store, and let me tell you what. Talk about a nice guy, humble guy, not full of himself, not no rock star attitude. Just very quietly comes into the store, asked if you know if you know he could sign some stuff for us. Uh, asked how the sales on his book were. He going. wasn't invented or in, in, in invited or anything. No, no, no. He lives locally, uh, and he just right. you know checking out the local comic shop, and uh, it was it, what a nice guy. I can't say it enough. That is very cool. Uh, it. I am very, very interested in going back and looking at older work from the Luna Brothers together, uh, things that I might have missed in my hiatus. Mm. But living in this moment, living in the now, once again, Alex and Ada, if you are not picking this up, you are shortchanging yourself. Image Comics, Alex and Ada, issue number 13. You want this. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to have to start on that one. That looks nice. Uh, yes, indeed. So now we're going to come to Kevin's top five here. And they it's are... It's predictable. I'm a Marvel zombie. Uh, it's not all Marvel this month, no, this week, no. that is to say. Uh, but, uh, but hey, hey, Troy, I, I never got a Silk number one, but here's Silk number two. Uh, Troy, what happened in Silk number one? Did you read it yet? Because I didn't, because you didn't get it for me. Oh, you poor guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I've enjoyed that character all through Spider-Verse, and, uh, you know, I only wish that I had been more fully into, uh, uh, what's it called, not sensational, uh, Superior Spider-Man, where she first appeared. Um, uh, that was where, where she first appeared, right? Uh, no, actually, it was in Amazing. Was it? Yes, yes, it was. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, her story unfolds from uh, Original Sin. Uh, she. Oh, was, I thought she started before then. No, 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 no. Uh, Peter discovers her. She is the original sin that you know the secret that Peter learns about. He goes and releases her from uh, the bunker that she was in, and when she learns that Morlin is still out in the universe, uh, she real you know she tells Peter that her life is very much in danger. That uh, Peter hasn't done her any favors by releasing her. Um, man, this 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 is so good. Robbie Thompson, Stacy Lee. Ian Herring. I must I must have missed that. I thought I had all of the current uh, Amazing Run, but I must have missed whatever issue was the bulk of that. Well, I, I think your problem here, Kevin, is that you probably are binge reading and binge reading a little too quickly. You need to slow down, take your time. I thought I would remember that. <laughs> now, go back and uh, reread your... Uh, your your amazing Spider Man's your Spider Verses, yeah. uh, you know, get get back into that. Yeah, well, I I definitely read uh, Spider Verse and just I I didn't over digest it. I was I, I savored every bit of it. That was such a great series. Yeah, sure he did. I I definitely did. Yeah, yeah. I was there on the toilet reading comics. That's where that's where you read comics too. Don't look at me like that. <sighs> on my couch, feet propped up cat in my lap, hot coffee at hand. Oh. Relaxing old school. Just ruined it with the cat part, Troy. I'm, Prin I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Princess Leia number two. Yes, yeah, Star Wars Princess Leia number two. 
So, uh, written by Mr. Wade, and then we've got the Dotsons on our chores, uh, both, uh, both Dotsons. Um, uh, later on, um, like once you get up a few issues, they become the Nissans. <laughs> I'm not, that's a, that's a car joke. There's not too many car jokes in a comic book show. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, but beautiful art. I, I said from the beginning, I predicted that this was going to be good because I had all the confidence in Mark Wade as a writer and all the confidence in the Dodsons as artists. I thought to myself, you know, the Dodsons do beautiful work on beautiful female characters. Uh, oh man, that is just so, oh. Wow, this 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 book is hitting it, man. This book is is cooking on all eight cylinders. It's yeah. definitely a V eight. Yeah, I'm I I I can't wait to get into it. I honestly I don't remember if I bought Princess Leia number one or not. You did. You need to go and get your. I remember selling it to you. Okay, so good. If I remember selling it, okay, you should remember. Then buying. I have it, and then I'll read two in a row. So lucky me. Lucky me. You, however, can still have that because we we've still got. I still we, have first print number one. Yes, I do. I still on have some variants. In fact, oh, a ton for of example, over here. I have the photo cover of Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. Look at her. She was so youthful. She was like Luke Skywalker said. She's beautiful. And your sister, dude. That's creepy. <laughs> Yeah, she's not my sister, so I could say she's beautiful. She was, and uh, you know what? And and she held up well for for a lot of years. I don't remember how she looks now, so I can't. Speak uh, she's. To that. You know what though? What's more important is that she is a talented actress, and she's actually quite entertaining in her stand-up. She does like a one-woman show. Uh, I haven't seen any of that. Oh yeah, you find yeah, that on she's, YouTube. Uh, I think so. All right, so. maybe we'll give you a link if you're lucky. Well, you know, why don't you just call her publicist? I'm sure she'll come by your place to do a personal appearance like, you know, celebrities do for you. Yeah, uh, Jeopardy Josh, uh, she she bought him uh, uh, some, some beer or something like that when they went to a Star Trek uh, symphony one time. It was weird. Are, are we ready? Because Kevin picked a really good one here. I picked a really good one. Yes, yes. Troy, what do I tell? Oh, Guardians team up number three. Kapow! But ah, uh, we've got uh, the Black Vortex uh, little crossover event there, and of course this is Guardians team up. Who are the Guardians teaming up with? Well, multiple artists. That's who, because apparently uh, hiring Art Adams is a losing proposition for any company. I love Art Adams. He is one of my very favorite artists of all times. He did uh, the the first uh, issue of this miniseries and apparently couldn't hang and we got a, a different uh, different artist in the second one and a different artist here in the third one. I'm liking this artist. I don't even know who this is. Who is this? Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, it looks familiar. Make I you? have... Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, the, these are new kind of clingy pages. So Sam Humphreys is the writer. Mike Mayhew is Mike the Mayhew. artist. Uh, I'm assuming that means that he's doing the inks and the pencils. Yeah. Uh, so the pencil work and the finished work. Yeah. Uh, and Rain Barreto is the colorist. Uh, and there we have it. Yeah. So Guardians team up. Uh, we started out, uh, kicked off really big time with the Avengers and uh, moved right on into the second issue. Now here we are, Ronan on the third. Guardians of the Galaxy with Ronan the Accuser. The Black Vortex story, which actually began in the Black Vortex Alpha and then moved on into all new X Men, Legendary Star Lord, Guardians of the Galaxy. I know that's not in order, but it's right, close right. enough. Just pick up all the pieces and get into that. Uh, there is, I'm grotesquely truncating the story here for time and brevity, but. There's this thing. It's like a magic mirror, the Black Vortex. You look into it, you see yourself in this truly badass fashion, uh, and when you pass through the Black Vortex, you come out the other side changed. Um, some people think it's a bad idea, like Kitty Pride. Some people think it might be a good idea so that we can combat more greater threats. Star-Lord thinks that. This has driven a wedge between Kitty and Peter in their romantic relationship, Romantic relationships in the Marvel Universe are often challenged. And, you know, Kitty dating some guy named Peter, it's its going to fail eventually. Yeah, you know, I mean, Ultimates Universe, Peter Parker. Over in the Mainline Universe, Pete Wisdom, Pete Rasputin, and now Peter Quill. I mean, what is it with Kitty? Kitty? Just stay away from guys named Peter. Yeah. It's easy to remember their name. <laughs> it is, it's easy to remember their name. 
Okay. Uh, so, so next so, up on your hit parade, Kevin. All right. I Troy. see you've gone to IDW. IDW. Yeah. No more. No more. Uh, uh, Top five marvels. I've got IDW. Now, this is the photo cover, which, of course, I must have. Orphan Black, issue two. Orphan Black is coming back April 18th at 9, 8 central on BBC America. I am so looking forward to it. Then that's, of course, going to be season three. Orphan Black is one of the best shows on TV. Um, once again this year at the Emmys, Tatiana Maslany, who is the, the, the main actress who acts in multiple roles. There's a bunch of clones. Uh, that's, that's what's going on in this show. Uh, she, she is the, the actress. She plays all these characters who were, who are clones. And so she's, she's got to go and change her, not only her appearance, but her, uh, just way of, of, of being. She's got to change herself so entirely to go between these different, uh, characters and they're often playing they're playing against each other in the same room and she does this amazingly like you can do that and have a little jokey you know short or whatever yeah. and get away with it but try to do that for an entire season of a series she pulls it off and we believe it we, you believe that these are different different people entirely and they uh, uh, it's an amazing show uh, what we're waiting for in uh, uh, season three is going to be the male clones. Oh my gosh, a male clones now. Um, and of course, this is the ID, IDW series that I, I missed the first issue of, and so I'm a terrible person. And yep, Troy, yep. Troy, I'll if you find another, I, to help I you. need it. I need it. Uh, it's one of those things where I need it. Where were you? Uh, for around here somewhere. <sighs> and if you don't have one, let Troy know, and he'll try to get you one too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Orphan Black. Orphan Black. So excited. Issue number two. I'm so excited. All right. Now. My final one, and I looked through this, I thought, and I saw, oh, it's a number one from Image. You know, you've got yep. a number one from Image every week, practically, because practically. Image has a, a bunch of great short series. They just I, keep dropping them. Like, Last week, Surface and Descender. I mean, you know, I, I could go back. We could, t we could take a whole hour show talking about the last year's worth of Image number one. Totally. We're not going to. We're not going to. This is... The Manhattan Project, and this is Jonathan Hickman um, and uh, Patara and Bel Air doing the art chores here. Um, this is uh, a bit cartoony. It, it, I, I've, I've gone through it, haven't read the entire thing, but have skimmed through, and it has the feel of uh, a, a classic. Um, what do I want to say? Uh, like a heavy metal. Uh, story like, mm, like heavy metal magazine story um on on the cover it says what if the research and development de department created to to produce the first atomic bomb was really a front for a series of other more unusual programs what if the union of our generation's brightest minds was not a si single signal for optimism but foreboding what if everything went wrong that's what's on the cover, and I'm sure that's the backstory. Yeah. That's not the story that I read inside. The story that I read inside was also great. <laughs> <laughs> Some alien stuff going on. It's, there's aliens. That's all you need to know. Well, part of what needs what, what needs to be understood here is that I think that's the backstory. The Manhattan Projects had a predecessor series. So what? there, yes, there was a Manhattan uh. Projects before this one, uh. Uh, which has been collected in trade form for people who may have missed it. <sighs> Uh, like me. Yeah, like you. Mm. Like poor Kevin here. See, I this thought is I was what getting you, in on the ground floor. See, this is what you get for being it's a Marvel really cool, zombie. Though. You've got to branch out and try more things. You gotta you gotta be a true comic connoisseur. There's Once only again, one Troy way to is do right. This. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Did it hurt you when you said that? No. <laughs> I, I say it weekly, I think. <laughs> well, that's because it's so. Nah. So Image Comics, Manhattan Projects, issue number one. IDW, Orphan Black, issue number two. Marvel, Black Vortex, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy team up, number three. Princess Leia, number two. And Silk, number two. Topped off with Images, Alex and Ada, number 13. Uh, Marvel's Black Widow, number 16. IDW, Boom, Star Trek, Planet of the Apes, The Primate Directive, issue number four. Altered States, Doc Savage from Dynamite, issue number one, one shot. And DC Comics, Batman Eternal, issue number 50. That is our top five. That's ten books that you should be reading. 
So other things coming out this week, and I, I believe this is the first week of it. We we mentioned earlier that, that we've got these these alternate covers that are the uh, the the the. The movie homage oh, homages posters. to movie posters. So we've yeah. got uh, we've got that Batgirl that's that, that looks like Purple Rain. Purple Rain, and we've got uh, a uh, Teen Titans that looks like uh, the Lost Boys. Yeah, uh, we've got Detective looking, which was the Matrix. Ma the uh, Matrix, obviously. Grayson that uh, last number week? eight was Enter the Dragon. Ah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the DC has been kicking out these uh, these movie homages. Uh, Green Lantern was 2001: A Space Odyssey. Green Lantern Corps was for Forbidden Planet. Yeah. So uh, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good good covers here with uh, with the current uh, new 52 stuff. Even me, who's yep. not a big new 52 guy, I'm like, yeah. oh, I oh you like wait, those, you wait. Kind of like those covers. In the month of April, I'm gonna get Kevin into DC's Convergence. You watch, <sighs> this is gonna happen. Really? Yes, I am. Oh no. Oh yeah. There's a lot coming up right now. We've got that convergence. We've got uh, Secret Wars. Secret in May. Wars. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That's, so that's exciting. And and we've got. Uh, oh gosh, what else do we have? Oh, uh, what I meant. I was going to say Batgirl. Um, there's big uh, thing going on with Batgirl, and we're going to talk about that in part two. So uh, if you're interested in talking about the Batgirl controversy for the cover of issue 41, uh, watch part two, and it'll be a link down down below here where you can watch part two. Uh, after we've had our dinner. Okay. Um, other things that we're going to talk about, Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're going to talk about uh, uh, The Walking Dead, uh, penultimate uh, episode for this season. We're going to talk about lots of, you know, all, all, all your favorite genre shows. Okay. Well, speaking of dinner, let's do it. Let's do that. From leaking to our builders to going off like gamma bombs. Switch your internet browser to comicsonline.com.